to steal some Pumas or something. <laughs> I was four. <laughs> you were at practice. <laughs> Anytime you talk to a top flight, like a world-class athlete, you're like, hey, you remember when this came out or when that? You're like, man, I was at practice. I, I don't know. World-class athletes work, and people hate to hear this because you guys wind up making so much money, but world-class athletes work so much harder than everyone else really from an bad. early age in order to get there. It's true. Yeah. It's true. I really didn't start playing organized sports though until I got to high school, really. I mean, I played Little League, but it wasn't the same. Yeah. High yeah, school I, was when you really... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I didn't really start like training, training until probably like junior year of high school. Yeah, junior year of like, high school. Re- like really training where you're right. like, oh, You got okay. no time for anything. But yeah, at yeah. some point, that has to kick in or you never make it. Right. doesn't matter how talented you are. That has to kick in at some point. Yeah, I would say junior year of high school. All right, we are uh, playing that song. It was a big deal when The Last Dance was released in April of 2020. We're still talking about The Last Dance 18 months later, and that's because Scottie Pippen said this in his new book regarding Michael Jordan and The Last Dance. This is a quote. Except Michael was determined to prove to the current generation of fans that he was larger than life during his day and still larger than... LeBron James, the player many consider his equal, if not superior. So Michael presented his story, not the story of the last dance. As our coach Phil Jackson built a 97-98 season, once it became obvious the two Jerrys, that's owner Jerry Reisendorf and general manager Jerry Krause, were intent on breaking up the gang no matter what happened. David Kaplan joins us on the Goodyear Hotline, brought to you by Goodyear, making the plays that move you forward. Goodyear more driven. Cap, what do you think of those comments? It's getting juicy, Cap. Really juicy. Number one, I was just talking to Evan off the air. I mean, how much rent does Michael pay Scotty in his head? I mean, come on, man. You're one of the top 50 players, and you continue to embarrass yourself. Uh, it's crazy because I've been around Michael a significant amount away from the basketball court. This dude is the most confident human being in the history of the world. I mean, it's not close. I don't believe Michael had any interest in releasing those videos because he had to make sure that the new generation of young fans knew he was better than LeBron. Michael knows he's better than LeBron. LeBron's a great player. He may be the second best of all time. Michael is a GOAT, and it isn't close. Well, okay, Cap. So, look, some things you say – in order to sell a book. Obviously, I think that is one of those things because that's a huge debate that everybody gets into, but I'm not going to let that be the real narrative here. Let me ask you a real question. Being a guy with that you, played in Chicago, <laughs> being a guy that played in Chicago, I spent time around MJ and Pip as well. Do you think there's anything at all to what Pip said about how the ego of Jordan can sometimes outshine what other players on this team have done to help him win championships? Do you, do you feel Pip at all in that capacity? Um, I don't because here was Michael's perspective. And I've asked him this question, and he gives you this, the same answer every time. Michael truly believed if you couldn't play at his level, not in terms of talent, in terms of want to, will to win, competitiveness, and then you had to be really, really good, that he just didn't have a use for you. And he believed he knew what the level of commitment and intensity was to win in a city where we don't win a whole lot till they came along. And if you don't want to play that way, that's fine. Then get out. Don't have anything to do with us. But if you're going to be with me, you're going to play one way. And we all know who the king of the castle was. Yeah. And, and you know, Cap, for me, I, I have a relationship with both of these guys. They, they brought me up in the sports world when I was a, young, wild kid running around New York City. And and so, in the end, I just feel like Scotty is reaching a lot in these situations for a lot of different reasons. Um, Michael's Michael. I mean, if it was built around him and that was the last dance and that's what it was going to be, that's what it was going to be. But what type of rift has the last dance caused amongst not only Scotty Pippen but just other teammates in general that feel a certain way about the way they might have been portrayed in the last dance? 
Uh, I, I think a lot of guys were like, yeah, whatever. I mean, that's the way it was when they were playing and that they told the true story. But, you know, I remember, I don't know, when did the first excerpt of the book come out? Five months ago, four months ago, where Scotty made some comments about Tony Kukoc of why Tony got to take the last shot in a particular game, and he claimed it was that Phil Jackson, it was racially motivated. And I called. Tony's a good friend of mine. I play golf with him. I called Tony. I said, have you heard what Scotty said today? No, tell me. He goes, Scotty and I are really tight. We're boys. I said, uh, you're not going to like this. I read him the quote. He's like, what? No way he said that. Yes, it's in his book. And Tony, I, asked, I offered him to come on the air. No, I'm not getting involved in this. I can't believe he's continuing to do this. Yeah, Tony was more than a little hurt by Scotty as opposed to the way he was perceived and at times at the beginning of the relationship treated by Michael. Cap, you know what's crazy about this whole thing for all the things that Pip has just started to say and will say more, I'm sure, in his book Unguarded that will be coming out soon. I guarantee Michael Jordan doesn't even care. That's, what makes, that's what makes MJ MJ. It, whatever. I, I truly feel that way, don't you? A hundred percent. That Michael, if he's listening right now, he's drinking his coffee, laughing, going, I still, I'm still the topic of conversation, and I can't stop it. It's phenomenal. I guarantee you, he doesn't care. He's laughing at it. How much of this do you think, Cap, is Jordan is so, like, I, the way I just sort of describe Jordan, defectively competitive. And I'm with you, the GOAT, for various reasons. We don't need to get into that now, and I, I think it's pretty clear. But... He, like, I think of his Hall of Fame speech where everyone's there to honor the man. He gets up and uses it as an opportunity to kind of obliterate all the people who are there showing him love. Because to me, it's like he's so competitive. He has to constantly, like, win at everything. And so, because it takes two, this doesn't come out of nowhere, right? Whatever Scotty's issue is, it's coming from somewhere. Where where he feels like he needs to kind of stand up for himself in some way. Like, how much of it is the way Jordan has treated people through the years? I don't know if it's as much that, Max, as Scotty's been that guy who was always doubted or handled things poorly and got criticized despite being an incredibly talented basketball player. He was a guy who went off to Central Arkansas and wasn't even going to be on the team, might have been the student manager, then he starts to grow, then he becomes a basketball player, but then everyone goes, ah, he's not good enough to play in the NBA. And then I was scouting in the league. Jerry Krause had called me. I was between jobs and asked me if I would go to the pre-draft camp in 1987. It's at the University of Illinois at Chicago. I want you to come in there, he tells me. I want you to go see this game on this court at this time and watch number 58 and do not tell anyone who you're looking at. Okay. There's like a, you know 90 dudes there. I walk in. I watch this guy. I'm like, well, that guy's you know, really good. He gets up in the passing lane. You don't see that in a pre-draft camp. Usually every guy's trying to just score. If we get done, he meets with me. What would you think of him? That guy's really good. He's really talented. Where do you think he's going to go? We're hoping to steal him in the seventh round. Because, Jay, remember that now it's a two-round draft. It was mm-hmm. seven, eight, nine, ten rounds back then. Mm-hmm. And so the next day, I watch him again. I write my little report up. And Jerry said, what do you think now? I said, Jerry, there's no way that guy's there in the seventh round. That guy's really good. Now, did I think he's who he is? No. The third day of the camp, number 58's got like 40 guys around the court watching him. And Jerry's like, oh, God, I don't think he's going to be there when we pick. And then they made the trade to go get Scotty, and Scotty became Scotty. Then Jerry Reinsdorf, Scotty says, I want a long-term deal. I've had back problems. He gives it to him and tells him, I can't renegotiate this. So if you sign it, you got to live up to it. Yeah, Jerry, my back, I got to make sure I'm protected. And of course, a year in, he's underpaid grossly and they won't renegotiate the deal. He'd been warned. It was on him. Then he sits out 1.8 seconds because Tony's going to get the shot and not him. Then he couldn't play with migraines in the Easter Conference final game seven. Like, all this stuff happened, and he's still one of the 50 greatest players. So I still think it's all in his head. I do. How has the relationship deteriorated over time? 
I mean, you know, two guys that win championships together, you still would think that they would celebrate to some degree, but clearly that's not the case. We had Dennis Rodman on, and he said when he came to Chicago, he said, I walked in the Birdo Center the first day. I've just been traded to the Bulls. Michael Jordan walks up to him, pulls him in the training room. He said, he closed the door. He looked at me. He goes, you're a great player. You screw this team chemistry up, I'll kill you. Are we clear? He said, and that was basically the last time he ever talked to Michael Jordan while he was with the Bulls, except on the court. He said, we'd go to dinner, and Dennis and his entourage at one table, Scotty at another table, Michael and his group at another table. Mm-hmm. He's like, wasn't like we hung out. And Scotty, the same thing. And Scotty had some off-the-court stuff go on here that we don't have to get into. So none of that ever happened to Michael Jordan. So Scotty's had his share of missteps to contribute to him feeling disrespected at times. Mm. It's funny, Cap, like, you know, everybody's like, oh, their relationship. I'm like, what relationship? You mean on the court? Because off the court, Jordan's one of one. You know, he had his crew. Everybody had their crew back then. It wasn't a lot of team events and things of that sort. Well, Michael had his crew, but if it was anybody on the team, it was not really any of the guys that were starters. Yeah. It was Scotty Burrell or mm-hmm. some of these other guys that just wanted to be in his company. But the, the other stars, Scotty. Dennis Rodman. Look, and here's how tough Michael was. Will Purdue, not a great player, but a really solid contributor. And Michael refused to call him Will Purdue. He kept calling him Will Vanderbilt on the court. <laughs> and Will said to him, my name's Will Purdue. He goes, you ain't good enough to play at Purdue. That's how Michael challenged these guys and treated these guys. How, yes, that's Cap, all true. I love it, though. Cap, how much do you think – that Pippen, like I always thought, LeBron is like a puffed up Pippen. He's he has he he has he LeBron plays oh, like LeBron is a point forward. Pippen was an early prototype of a of a scoring defending point forward who could run your offense. He was an excellent passer, not a great shooter. Like in many respects, LeBron reminds me of a a a blown up version of Scottie Pippen. And Pippen maybe identifies when he sees LeBron, that's some version of me and prefers that to Jordan or kind of uses that as a proxy to like hit Jordan over the head with. I mean, like, is there anything there? Um, They're similar styles. I mean, yeah, that's like a Cadillac and a Chevrolet. I mean, LeBron's just ridiculously good. But Michael could, Michael didn't have all the training and 